Greetings, world. It is I, Andrew, the bearded lady from the Harry Game Lords. And for Zatu Games, I am going to be reviewing for you this Battle of the Bards. Ooh. What did I think? Come, find out. Okay, so before I share my thoughts on Battle of the Bards by Junk Spirit Games, let's head over to the table and find out how to play. This is a very brief look at how to play Battle of the Bards. Every player starts off with this kind of layout in front of them. This is the main play area here. There are different veteran bards that people can buy. And as you can see, it says so here, you would need to have a combination of a wanted card and another card. Those would be got rid of. Plus two dice with the same number on them. And if you wanted to get the newest bard in town, which is the one featured here on top of the bard deck... It's the same thing, two cards, one of them being a wanted, but this time it's three dice with the same number on that you would need to get rid of. So what happens is everybody starts off with the same hand. In that hand are two wanted cards, then a whole load of basic cards. So you have a basic, two basic singers. The top left is the coloured dice from here that you will get. And then you can have this ability down here, so you would need to roll a 4 and under to be able to get yourself another red dice. The same is true in here, so you'd get yourself a blue dice with the basic illusionist, and you would roll a 3 or above to get yourself another blue dice. Same again with the basic dancer, but only the, the difference is that you would have, that's right, a purple dice. And then the yellow dice. And then this one here is the roadie. A white cube means that you can get yourself any dice you would like. And the pick here is just over there. And the pick is what you would need to get from, from this one. Now what a pick can do is they can change the rolled dice up one or down one in terms of the numbers rolled or you could allow yourself a re-roll. So these can be quite useful as a pick. So you have there 11 cards, and then everybody is dealt one of these cards um, face down, and this becomes your 12th card. Uh, and they're all different, but they all do the same thing. They have uh, a differing number here, and obviously a different colour dice. This one, the lead vocalist, allows you to get a blue dice. And if you roll a 4, not under or, uh, or over, but an exact 4, you can get yourself a wild dice. And you can get rid of a card from your, from your hand. Which you want to do because you want to get rid of these basic singers and start getting yourself veteran bards who carry victory points and better special abilities. That is the basic hand that everybody has. Now, the first player has this awesome mandolin, good times, and also all players get dealt at the beginning of the game one of these encore cards. This tells you a kind of a secret thing that you need to be collecting. You need to be collecting a certain colour of veteran bards for the end game encore. Where you would select the veteran bards in your hand that match these colours. Take their dice and roll them. The person with the highest number on the dice collectively wins an additional four bonus points and I tell you what, that could win the game for you. This is a handy cheat sheet card, and I've got you two here so that you can see what is available. So you have the Uncommon Bard abilities. This is the Scout card. So as you can see, you would take the top card of the deck. You could put it back if you wished, or if it was a basic card, 
you can fire it, getting it rid of your group and therefore freeing up your hand for more veteran cards. You have a sustain. So on some of the veteran cards, as you can see here in the Baldrick Boom Rock, you have a this symbol. This is the sustain symbol. So this person would need to throw a three or above. They would then gain an orange dice and then they could sustain. And as you can see, sustain on here is gain another action this turn, which can be very, very helpful, or activate the sustain ability on the side of the card. Baldrick here has this sustain ability. You are immune to dice being swapped. This can come in where not a dice is stolen, but a dice is swapped, taken from your play area and swapped by somebody else in their play area. Uh, Renee, the hallowed, she gets to summon two new crew members or new cards. So draw a card from the deck and put it into play. Do not gain the dice in the upper left of the card, but you may use the card's ability this round. Again, very, very handy when you have that ability. And then you have this one here where you can search and then draw two cards from the discard pile. That is your own discard pile. Again, very useful. So on your go, you have a, a number of available actions to play. In fact, you can play two actions on your go. So you can create a performance by discarding three dice in a sequence. So say like, for instance, I'd rolled the one, two, and three. Now I can now claim a sequence. So, as you can see, here are the different colours. The purple, the red, or the blue. And I would be able to choose either a blue, a purple, or a red of my choice. If, for instance, this had been rolled, this sequence had been rolled, uh, the majority of the, the coloured dice is purple, I would have no choice in what I am able to get. I would have to get a purple token. These here, so the dice would be put back into the pool and one of these would be chosen. These would then remain in front of you and what you're wanting to do is, is collect the right appropriate ones so that you can get involved with these cards up here. You also can use a ability on a bard. Assign a dice to the bard and then do the ability. You may hire a veteran bard you may capture an audience. Capturing an audience is where you can score most of your points. Taking the uh, different tokens that you have collected from creating a performance. So I have these and I am able to capture this audience. I have the two reds and of course this is wild for whatever colour. Then I would place this in front of me and I would be able to do this ability for the rest of the game. Plus, at the end of the game, I'd get myself six victory points. The game is finished when somebody has in front of them four of these audience cards. The last round is ushered in and people count up their scores. On your go, you may discard either one of these tune tokens, the plectrums, or you may discard a card for the same effect. A re-roll of all or any of the dice and or nudging a dice up one or down one. You may also pass, and when everybody has passed on their goes, then a new round begins. You have seen how to play this very unique deck building, dice pooling game of, well, greatness. First of all, let's talk about components. The artwork on the box and then throughout the game is, well, it's just really, really nice. I really like that kind of cartoony artwork for all of the different bards. I like the way that it's a bit of a fantasy kind of genre. So you have singing trees, dancing badgers, goblins and other weird and wonderful things. And, and then you've got those fantastic dice, and not just a few either. In this very compact box, you will find yourself 60 of those dice. And they're not just 
normal looking dice either. They're really nice, colourful dice. Very, very nice indeed. The card quality is great. The token quality, also great. In, in terms of component quality, yes, this game has it. So who is this game for? Well, the artwork can make it feel like this is a game open for children, but I feel like the complexity of the game would leave children wondering what to do. As Hairy Game Lords, we found this game to be right on our level. It felt like a good filler game, but actually had some length to it. On the box, it says it takes 15 minutes to learn this game. Well, I actually think it takes less than 15 minutes to learn this game. And once learned to be able to teach this game, it is even quicker. When you have the game set up in front of you, it just makes sense in terms of going from each thing to each thing, explaining how to play it. And us hairy game lords got into the game very quickly and thoroughly enjoyed it. Really like that deck builder kind of element to it there, but also the thing with the dice. And we li I like the cleverness of the dice as well. You're not just rolling dice for the sake of it. When you roll those dice, the outcome of it can be a number of different things whether you're going for the same number, or whether you're going for a sequence, and therefore you're getting to choose which element you're going to go for and how best to roll out what you're wanting to do on your go in order to either get more bards uh, or bring in more dice into your pool for later turns. Maybe you're wanting to get those kind of performances and so therefore getting certain sequences in line so that you are able to, in a few goes time, capture an audience. And of course, the audience thing is where you earn the most victory points and hopefully win the game. The Us Harry Game Lords really enjoyed the game. We felt that it had a lot of depth as well as it being relatively short and taking just under an hour to play. There was plenty of things to do, keep us occupied, and the game just seemed to flow really, really well. There is a little bit of a take that element to it, but not so bad. Uh, you can steal someone's dice, but you then have to swap it with one of your own. That's the only take that element in there, and it keeps the game uh, feeling nice and friendly, but also with that kind of competitive nature of who is going to capture all of those audiences and get the most victory points at the end of the game. What's also cool is that encore round where everybody is secretly trying to get different, like, veteran bards, I was going to call them power bards, trying to get those different veteran bards to then be able to roll the most dice at the end uh, and, and hopefully get the most points uh, to be able to win those precious four points from the encore round. Now, of course, you have to remember it all does come back down to a dice roll and so there is that luck element involved. I, this is a game I suggest you certainly check out. There's a lot of nice components in here in terms of the artwork, the cards, the tokens, and of course loads and loads of brilliant dice. You could use them in other games. And of course, with all of that dice rolling, you will most definitely need a dice tray. Hey, and Zatu have got some fantastic dice trays available for you to get involved with. There is this one, a nice sized one here. Or if you wanted to rock out, hey, let's have everybody rolling in the same dice tray. Let's rock out this massive bad boy for the middle of the table. Yes. Zatu, we've got it all. Yes. Ovs, check out Zatu for a brilliant price on Battle of the Bards, as well as our dice trays, and enjoy.